All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead Q&A for today leading up to the 10th episode for The Walking Dead Season 8. In this one first, we're going to give our thoughts on this whole Henry replacing Carl as the comic book series version of Carl in The Walking Dead TV series. And spoiler warning, if you guys have not seen the mid-season premiere for The Walking Dead Season 8 yet, you'll definitely want to watch it before you watch this uh, video. So, if you guys missed it, I made lots of videos in the last few days. We did a reaction to the mid-season premiere, very sad episode. We did a full review, over 20 minutes long, in-depth for the episode. We did uh, predictions for episode 10 and what we think is going to happen. And we did one giving our thoughts on the kind of uh, injured uh, Rick that we see at the end of the episode. Check it out if you guys don't know what I'm uh, referring to. Uh, videos on the channel on it and some speculation about his hand and whether or not he may have some people think it's a screwdriver through it some people think it's a knife through it some people think that's just his his gun underneath it which is and it's just kind of bleeding because he was holding his his uh, side or something which is very possible some people think maybe a, a bolt or something um, so we'll have to see I guess it's it's not that easy to tell even if you zoom in quite a bit um, you know, when you just get to see him lying against a tree, it's uh, it's not that uh, simple to tell what it actually is. But that uh, video is on the channel for you guys to check out, and you can see the pictures and analyze for yourself. As well as we did one with your guys' kind of responses to the episode and uh, how it seems like the fan base feels about uh, The Walking Dead's mid-season premiere. So going to episode 10 and going forward with this series, I think it's pretty safe to say at this point, as we mentioned in the review, as we mentioned in a lot of the videos, that uh, Henry is most likely going to be our Carl 2.0 um, replacement. So the TV series version, we see Henry in episode 9. He kills Gavin when Morgan is a bit hesitant. It seemed like Morgan was going to do it anyway, but he didn't have to because Henry was able to come up behind him and <laughs> get him in the neck. Uh, very brutal with his uh, sharpened uh, spear, which also I think psychologically is going to have an effect on Morgan. And we're really starting to see a lot of things develop here to make sense for Morgan should he decide to leave at the end of the season. And that's what carries him into uh, Fear the Walking Dead uh, because. I mean, he's had to kill a lot of people this season. He's now seen Henry kind of turn into a killer as well. He's just seen some really dark stuff. He's got blood on his hands. He's got blood everywhere. He's just wiped out, you know, dozens and dozens of saviors. Um, he wanted to kill them all. Jesus was able to kind of, uh, um, you know, talk him out of it or, or, or stop him for a little while. And then he got right back to it in this episode to save uh, Ezekiel, um, you know, with episode 9 there and Henry helping as well as, uh, as Carol. So Henry 2.0, or Carl 2.0. So, you know, he comes in at the beginning of this uh, season as a character. He kind of comes in out of nowhere as Ben's, uh, Benjamin's uh, little uh, brother. Of course, Benjamin, who was killed by Savior uh, Jerry in a very sad sequence last season. Um, you know, so far, I mean, Henry's story, I think, is, is a really good one. You know, it's that of, uh, of vengeance, wanting vengeance for his brother and for all the people that they'd uh, killed at the kingdom. And you can definitely feel for that because as we see this season play out, literally, you know, the kingdom is... is um, at the beginning, you know, if this is a fighting game, flawless victory at the beginning, and then all of a sudden the 50 cal, you know, uh, uh, shows up and they just get mowed down. So almost all of them are killed except for, you know, a few exceptions here. We got Ezekiel, we got Jerry, and then we got, uh, you know, a few others in and around from the kingdom that are still there, as well as the ones that stayed back. But most of the fighters from the kingdom, most of the people that Henry had known were just mowed down by the 50 cal in addition to his brother being killed. So he has seen pretty much his entire community annihilated. He has seen everybody killed, or at least he's heard about it. He knows that all these people that were around are no longer around. So this is a great origin story for a character that goes the opposite way from where Carl went in the TV series, where he had a little bit of that darkness in him, but you had characters like Herschel, who had an effect on him, telling him it was wrong what he did in season three with Woodbury near the uh, in the finale episode there by killing the kid from Woodbury. Later on, he kind of, uh, Rick sort of kind of he, he changes, and even though he goes back on it, sometimes he tries to kill Negan in that, you know, he kind of goes back on that again. And then in the end, Carl, the TV series version, ends up being, I want to say, a good guy type character and not wanting to just kill everybody, seeing that Negan actually, he's a bad guy, but he's not that bad of a guy, and spending some time with him, spending some time with the Saviors, developing some kind of quick relationship with Negan in that short time. Um, 
you know, Carl, um, seeing that maybe there's a, there's another way here or that, you know, just killing everybody is not the answer all the time, which, you know, he's, he's a good guy character. And it's great to have those characters that are, you know, uh, just simple, you know, <laughs> good guy uh, type characters. But it's also fun to have characters like Morgan that uh, do what needs to be done when it needs doing and kind of get a little bit lost in, in the process. And Henry, that seems to be totally lost right now. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see. I think uh, he'll be a really good replacement for Carl. As weird as it was going in the season, seeing them kill Carl off in the mid-season finale, seeing everything that happened around that, a lot of questions kind of coming up whether or not it's the right thing to do. And because there were so many things in the comic series coming up in the next couple years that uh, we were looking forward to see Chandler Riggs as Carl do. But when you think about it now and you see his age, you start to look at, especially in episode uh, 9 and just how old he's looking in interviews and that now, you add a couple years on to that and it does not have the same impact as a very young, you know, messed up kid uh, can have, you know, in terms of the horror aspect, which I've kind of given my thoughts on already. So uh, to see a very young, uh, innocent kid like Henry kind of be turned into this, uh, this just this demon kid on the side, on the good guy side, on the side of uh, our protagonist, um, it's very, it's very interesting, and I think that it fits almost too well. They've really, sh they really shake things up this season, but it looks like. They put so much thought into it, and they've executed it so well. I feel like it works. You know, it, it works, and it works better than I would have thought that it uh, it did going in. Just the way everything kind of has has fit, all the pieces have fit in together here, and that's why after episode eight, the mid, the mid season finale, even though I was drawing some conclusions, and a lot of a lot of us were, it was kind of like, well, we kind of have to wait to see what they have in episode nine, and after that, uh, for us, uh, the stuff with the dream and that from Carl to Rick, and. Um, you know, Henry being kind of this lost soul, so to speak. So we'll have to see if Rick kind of, you know, by the end of the season maybe, or in season nine, kind of takes Henry in as sort of like a, you know, an, another son, this kind of deal, and how Rick is going to have an effect on Henry and how that whole thing is going to go if they develop, you know, a relationship. Right now they don't really know each other, but of course, you know, Rick is going to have a hole there because he lost his son that he may... You know, he may take a liking to Henry straight away because Henry has lost everybody too. And we may see him kind of not replace Carl with Henry. The comic book series version and the TV series, they're kind of doing that. But as a character, just kind of becoming a fatherly figure for him, we'll have to see if they can kind of tie that together and work that in to make that feel right. Um for Rick to kind of guide Henry, but uh, it seems like so far it's going to be uh, pretty tough to kind of bring him uh, bring him back. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they have uh, for Henry in the future. He's a new character, so we got to give him a chance. And uh, you know, it's it's easier I think to take a character that's been there for a long time and do something with them to get that emotional to have fans care to have the viewer care. It's probably more difficult to do it with a brand new character, but I feel like they've done a really good job so far of really just in a short period of time making us care for this uh, Henry character, at least for me. But you guys, write your comments below. Let me know what you think about Henry kind of replacing Carl in future comic book moments and kind of becoming, yeah, a sort of replacement in a way for uh, Carl that now has been killed off prematurely in the TV series version versus the comics. Um, we'll go into a few of you guys' Q&A questions for today as per usual, and I'll have the uh, end videos here with all the other videos we did this week if you guys haven't seen them or you missed any of them. Vegito Blue says, I cried the entire episode. So uh, there were quite a few people that were pretty emotional during the episode. A lot of people were, were not, as you saw in the viewer responses yesterday, but a lot of people uh, were. Uh, Leopard Lady RN says, I thought the death was a little drawn out. It was beginning to become a parody of itself. So some people did feel like it was too long. Um, Adam Willis said, honestly, uh, I'm glad Gavin got uh, skewered. The whole time that sequence played out, I was just thinking he made his choice. Do it already, not to mention if it hadn't been Henry or Morgan, it would have been Lucille. That's true that uh, Negan might have just <laughs> put him out of his misery after failing so miserably and losing his entire uh, group. Uh, Henry, um, Negan might have made a, uh, an example out of him. But um, yeah, they use it for Henry instead, and it, uh, it's going to change a lot of things for Henry and really get him started. So it's... Um, it's a good one to use that, I think, for Henry to kind of develop in that way. Ryan O'Sullivan says, uh, Trev Q&A, uh, isn't Simon going to, or is Simon going to turn on Negan? The preview of the next episode 
uh, shows uh, Negan uh, pissed at him. Uh, your thoughts? So it is true that he is pissed off at him, and we're going to see some stuff probably this this weekend with Simon. This one looks like it's going to be a Simon episode, and we may see, you know, there's one question which I'll save for another video, but is is it possible that Simon could be worse than Negan? So is it possible that uh, Simon could be more trigger happy, could be more brutal, and could be more vicious than even Negan is? Um, so we're going to have to see if uh, if that's the uh, the case. Uh it could be. We'll see this weekend. Uh, Talking Dead Heads 32 says, "Hey Trev, Q and a question uh, for you. Do you think uh, Carl's, or do you think Carl wrote a letter to Negan as well? So do we think that Carl actually had a letter there for Negan? That would be funny if he did. I don't think that he would, but they did kind of develop a pretty quick uh, relationship there in season seven, and um, you know he may have. He may have if uh, if he thinks that Rick might not kill him after the whole thing ends." And just whatever happens with that. Uh, but it was pretty close in season 7 finale that Negan almost did bash his head in. So he can't care for the kid that much. Um, <laughs> you know, because he was going to kill him, right? So it's what it is. Uh, with the bat, too. Ren says, hopefully the series ends next episode. Uh, not sure how much longer I can suffer through this cheesy, dull crap. Uh, I'm only still uh, watching out of habit at this point. So I guess, you know, again, just not everybody enjoying the episodes. But I almost feel like at this time, and this is something like, you know, we've touched on a lot this year. I feel like it's just become kind of popular to hate on The Walking Dead because it's been going for so long and everything. I feel like it's just kind of like a thing that I'm starting to notice more and more. When a lot of times I feel like it's not warranted. Sometimes it is warranted, you know, but... I, I just, they give us extended episodes. They do a lot with All Out War. I don't know what else people were expecting. I really don't. Um, you know, the uh, LXIX, uh, XXIV uh, slash uh, VII, this is the username, says, uh, Hey Trav, uh, can you do a video of the top five uh, of who killed the most saviors? So, who killed the most saviors during all of this uh, fighting? Man, it'd be tough to uh, it'd be tough to beat Morgan. I mean, Rick has killed a lot. Daryl has killed a lot. But uh, Morgan, Carol, yeah, I'd have to count. But I think right now Morgan might be in the lead after this season. He certainly wasn't last season, but ne going forward in this season, I mean, he has killed so many. It's crazy. The Canadian Walker says Glenn beat this one. So in terms of emotion, uh, he thought Glenn was uh, a sadder uh, death than the uh, the Carl death in the mid season premiere. And the last one will be from uh, Subliminal Pancakes. 78 who said i'm sad glavin uh, gavin had died uh, i thought he would have turned to rick's side so i you want to turn gavin to the uh, survivors i just don't know man i mean i feel like it's a better out to just kill him uh he is he is one of the better good guy type of saviors though he's not a bad guy by himself i don't think he's just caught up in this whole thing this whole web that negan has uh, spun here um so he's not a bad guy by himself, but I also can't really see him as part of the survivors either. And that'll be it for today's uh, Q&A, guys. Keep sending me your questions if you want to see another one tomorrow. I hope you've been enjoying all the videos this week. And if you like this one, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. And you can do it. You can subscribe at the bottom left. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys again soon for another. As always, it's Trev. And I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.